book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 5. Seventeen verse. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, Let thy gifts be to thyself. Give our awards to another. Yea, I will read the writing unto the king and make known to him the interpretation. O thou king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a king, and majesty, and glory, and honor. And for the majesty that he gave him, all people, nations, and languages, trembled and feared before him, whom he would he slew, whom he would he kept alive, and whom he would he set up, whom he would he put down. For when his heart was lifted up, and his mind hardened in pride, he was disposed of from his kingly throne. And they took his glory from him. He was driven from the sons of men, and his heart was made like the gold beast. And his dwelling was with the wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till he knew the Most High God ruled in the kingdom of men. That he appointed over his will. Thou his son, O best Satan, has not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest of all of this, but hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven, and brought the vessels of his house before thee. Thou and thy lords and thy wives and thy concubines have drunk wine in them. Thou hast praised the gods of silver and of gold and of brass and iron and wood and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know. And the God in whose hand thy breath is, whose are all of thy ways, hast thou not glorified. Then was the part of the hand sent from him. And this writing was written. This is the writing that was written. God has numbered thy kingdom and fixed. Thou art weighed in the balance and art found wanting. Thy kingdom is divided and given to the needs of the person. And commanded the assessor, and they told Daniel was scarlet. Gold about his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. And that night was thus shattered the king of the Chaldeans slain. Reading part of the fifth chapter of the book of Daniel. Since this is my closing night, I want to thank you for letting me come. The real strength of an aerial hip to me. I'm conscious that I can't preach like I once did because of age and because of sickness. But it makes me feel good that somebody won't listen to me. And I appreciate you letting me try to preach to you. God bless you for your kindness and willingness to let me come and be with you. I shall always appreciate it. I don't know how to express it becomes times like that. I'm helpless. I find that words are inadequate to express what you feel at a time like that. And then I wish I had words to express to you what your support and your prayers as well as your financial support has meant to the church and the camp of work. You don't realize how much strength that is to us. 
along with some other churches like yours, they would keep going. And it were not for your gifts regularly, and your prayers constantly. The devil would have us down a lot of times. He'd have us down. Because you constantly pray for us, because you give of your means as a gift to us. Or you just go on and let the devil worry about it. Because God helps us with us who pray for us, those who give to us, to meet what he has signed us to do. And I pray that God will strengthen you and bless you. Don't forget that you're in a tremendous ministry through that camp and through your pastor. Maybe the world around you don't recognize what's going on, and they don't. But God recognizes it, and that's all that matters after all. He's once keeping the permanent record, all these records, and all these honors, and all these feelings, and all these. Sittings down here should be gone and put away with the wind. Gone with the wind. But what a wind through God is permanent records. And we will face them again. We will rejoice over it. God's made a record that will tear you a shit over it. Store it up in bottles. And you'll face them again. Thank God for your earnestness and your conscious helpfulness. Thank God for your wonderful pastor. I greatly, greatly appreciate him and marvel at how God used he and his family across this nation. I know of no man has used as much as he's used nationwide, worldwide, as America. All over the world, as much as you use this man. I thank God for him. I thank God that I am kind of a friend of his. They speak to him. Speak to him, man, that's of his fame and his ability and his influence. Now, I always try to do something for him to like, feel like I'm having a part. <coughs> great ministry and you have a part. Thank you for everything. I do for us next year. Come to the camp if you can. Brother Harold Smith will be there most of the week. Preach for the other day. Brother Butler will be there too Wednesday at noon. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We would hope to have E.J. Daniels, but he had the surgery Tuesday and you won't be able to come. But we'll have a bunch of other great preachers there that we put in this gospel. And we're looking for a great time in the Lord. And I'm sure we're going to have a great meeting because the devil was aggravated all of us all the week. Yeah. Never had as many things to break down and blow up and come to pieces. Getting ready for one camp as have this year. And been a constant breakdown in a constant thing all week. I've been able to do my best here preaching, learn about the different things uh, uh -oh. having to do. We had all the feed order. By the time we was ready for the delivery of the big freezer, so the promise. Had to cancel the order of the meat and all that stuff. Had so many things to him that they're worried about, and it's become my responsibility to take care of all that because I'm the leader. And it's always the leader's responsibility. And I had it to do, and I've not been the best. I apologize for that. I've tried to do it. But thank you for letting me come and being patient with me. I've done the best I could do. Most of the time. But 
I love you anyway. And I know you love me or you wouldn't put up with me. I have a warm spot in my heart for you. You're a dead people. Let us pray. Father, we've all gathered here tonight. Gathered in here with you. We want to present our lives to you, and if there's anything in our lives you need, just take it now. We want you to have anything out of us that you want. We want you, oh God, to bless this congregation tonight. Say something through thy servant, it'll help you. We want you to bless this church. They've been so good to us, to the camp, to the world around. They've been a lighthouse. They've kept, they've kept the lower lights burning. They've sent a dream across the way. And it's many poor struggling seamen found the way home through this church. We praise you for letting them be existing. Let them be the witness and the light that they've been. Oh God, how we pray you'll continue to bless them. Father, we pray now that you'll bless each one and keep the devil out of them. Don't let the devil wreck out these precious homes. We pray for the parents. We pray for the children. We pray for this church that you won't let the devil get in and pay them. We pray for any members of the family that are lost and undone and without God. Some way, somehow, oh God, how we pray in Jesus' name that you'll save them. We pray, Heavenly Father, tonight that you just move in this service until we'll not forget this night. And we'll praise you for it when it's over. Amen. In the 27th verse, the heart weighed in the balance in a found morning. The heart weighed in the balance in a found morning. I've been trying to this entire week to get you to see your importance with God. Get you to see how God feels toward you. What you mean to God. What God means to you. That by Him and for Him you were created. That God loved you. And that all God has done has been in your, on your behalf. See, God never has done anything for anybody but man. All the things God did is in your favor, in my favor. He didn't do any effort for the devil. He didn't do any effort for anybody, anything else. Everything God, God ever created was for your benefit and mine. For you to bless you and bless me. Oh. Everything in creation, God had you and me in consideration when He did. It's all planned around us and for us. Because He loved us. And that was God's program. All of God's Word, all of God's love, all of God's everything has been in my favor and your favor. And will continue to search. But there comes a time. There comes a time when if there's no response, then God's through. Yes. That's a sad time. That's a sad hour. That's a sad day. 
Thou art weighed in the balance and found woman. We find a handwriting on the wall that Sasser has pitched the biggest party that's ever been pitched in history. So far as I know, there's never been a bigger <coughs> man and put in practice than this night. 35,000 in the orchestra. 35,000 instruments playing in perfect harmony. A dining hall a mile and a half long and a mile wide. Thousand lords sitting in horseshoe fashion tables. Tables cut out in horseshoe style, cut out in the middle and wrapped around the Lord with his wives and his concubines around. <coughs> There's Sasser on his song in the midst of it. All of this great orchestra playing in the great roof gardens. Peacocks pulling golden carts Fluffing their tail feathers with all the beauty of the peacock's tail feathers. Strutting through such beauty, such excitement, such reverie as never been known of before or since. Such an expensive banquet of celebration. Such a party, such a shindig, we'd call it, that has never been known on it was on. The battle had never felt more secure, standing army, standing guard, for sure that no enemies could come in and interfere with this night. It's all guarding every entrance. And they felt that they could not be interfered and nobody could break their heart. And they was going to pitch it and have one. While the guards stood at attention, demanding that nobody interfere with this great party. While they praised the gods of gold and silver. While they displayed the diamonds. While they let the diamonds sparkle in the bright lights of the night. While they praised the gods of silver and gold, while they drank their wines and put on and had to be tied. <laughs> and the guards' lives were to stick if they let anybody interfere with it. Never felt so secure and sure that nothing would break this party up. Because it's costing millions of dollars to put it on. Nobody wanted to be interfered with that night. All of the standing army out. Guarding. But all of a sudden, there's a hand up here. And again, they're right on the wall. Whose attention did it call? Saying that it would call no attention to anybody except the king, that is Sasser. Seems that other folks didn't see it. It wasn't written to other folks, it was written to the king. And as a result, it's frightening. He called for help. He called for the fortune tellers. He called for the soothsayers. He called for the mind readers. He called for others. But they couldn't unravel the writing. And he becomes so frightened, became so frightened that he shook like a jellyfish. His joints were unjointed and he sat there and shook and trembled. And Miss Bersessa said, honey, don't get all excited. Don't shake up like that. There's a man in the kingdom who got the spirit of the live God on him. He can read that for you. He did for your papa, and he read it for you. Well, he said, call him in, dear. 
and they called him Daniel. And Daniel looked it over, said, Sir, I'll give you so and so and so if you'll just tell me what that is on the wall. Said, Thank you, sir. Said, Keep your rewards. Keep your gifts. But I'll tell you. Said, You remember your father Nebuchadnezzar? How that God raised him up that he was the most powerful king that ever reigned up until his time. Kept alive who he would, put to death who he would, did what he wanted to do, had everything he needed. You don't remember what a great, powerful man God given the ability and the power and the brains and the prestige and the popularity. He let him go to be everything. And when he got up to that peak, he forgot God. And begin to praise the gods of other things instead of the living God. Do you not remember how that God made him get out on his own force and eat grass, lock, and oxen, sleep in the pasture with duke he fell on him? For seven years he rolled with light, had a stomach like a beast, eating grass, sleeping out in the fields. Acting as a beast? Didn't he act like a man? Lost all of his honor, lost all of that. You don't remember that son? Yeah. Sure, I remember when Pa went through that. But what's that got to do with me? Well, I'll tell you what it's got to do with you. I'm surprised that you saw all that happen to you. Father, never commit sir. And then you came along and committed the same sin against God Almighty yeah. when God had made you, give you so much and made you so powerful and honored you and let you get up. Then you forgot God and pulled the same stuff that your papa pulled. Yeah. And that this is writing on that wall is telling you this night your kingdom is going to be divided and God's going to kill you. Thou art weighed in the balance and found wanting. You don't have what it takes to get yourself right with God. You have the silver. You have the gold. You have the party. You have the power. You have everything else, but you don't have the privilege of being with God right now, oh boy. Thou art weighed in the balance and found wanting. You do not weigh. You're lacking. You're short weighted. You're on the weight. First of all, my friends, we're not the way you're in ourselves. <laughs> it's very common that people try to weigh themselves. They're foolish. I'm better than old so and so. I'm better than the preachers. I'm better than deacons. I'm better than some of them for church members up there at Locust Grove. Who told you that? Yeah, right. Boy, who hatched that out in you? <coughs> who taught you that stuff? Where'd you learn so much? Since when did God tell you that stuff? Look who I am. I'm better than so-and-so. I'm better than that Locust Grove crowd. How do you know you're better? You can't read their hearts. Right. You don't live in their shoes. You don't live inside of them. How do you know you're better than they? You don't live like they live every day and every night. You don't put up with what they put. How do you know you're better? Who pumped you that lie? You don't know it. Right. So you wait short. God said there's none good but one and that's God. Yes. So you disqualified yourself right then, bud. Right. When you said, I'm better than so-and-so, no, you're not. This night, you're good. That's it. 
is. So you sh shut that trap up and stop going around puffing yourself up better than that church of Ben, better than that preacher, better than so and so. You better than nothing but a, just a failure, that's all you are. God weighs you out right how much you weigh. Talking like that. Far better than others. There's a lot of men that fight better than us, but they all around him. Huh? Don't you think some of them in fun was a lot better than the others that drowned in the flood? But they all around it, didn't they? Right. Some of them said, I'm better than that church member. But all of them that's not saved going to hell, I don't care how much better than you are than us preachers and us church members. Yeah. You go to hell anyhow if you want washed in the blood of the Lamb. Right. I don't care how much better you are. If you're not saved, you're walking. Right. You're warned. You're on the way. You're going to hell if you haven't been born again. If you're not a child of God, you're headed straight to hell as a mark is to his door. Mm -hmm. You just face it tonight. Right. Just be better than all of us church members, all of us preachers and deacons, all of us church Everybody in union time, be better than all of professed Christians. Be better than one. But if you're not born again, you're still going to hell. Right. A lot of them better than others. But when the flood came, they all went to me. What did Jesus say about the rich man? He's a lot better than the old boy down there, but the gate he up was sore, sticking to the smelling down the road. The old clothes sticking to him. On the back, he had his dogs licked his sores. But what did Jesus say? He said, Lazarus in his lifetime had it rough. You had the good things of life. Now he's coming and thou art tormenting. Sure. You come along and say, well, I'm good at so and so. You're good for nothing but hell if you haven't been born in. Right. You haven't got the blood of Jesus applied. You're on the way. Right. God, way on God's steals and found warning tonight. Mm -hmm. I want you to realize that. Not only that, and that is, in the scales of your own opinion, you're not able, you're not capable of deciding how good you are to start with. I'm not going to take a decide how good I am. Right. I've got a deceitful heart. Yes. You've got a deceitful heart. Right. Sometimes we think we're mighty good, and then we find out we're rotten. Yes. You just can't depend on ourselves deciding how good we are. Because the devil gets us with deceitful minds and deceitful hearts sometimes. I don't even know a lot of people think they're good, and they find out they're lost and going to hell. I think Ben Shazer thought he was a good fella, but he found out he was weighed and found woman. Yes. And this night thou shalt die, and then you shall be kingdom. This night thou shalt die. Oh, you have your automobiles, you have your farms, you have your homes, you have your fine clothes, you have a time, you can go drink and dance and cuss. And lie and steal and commit adultery and sex, find your sex desires to pass it, and have a time, high heel time. You have a time. But what if God pulls you over the scales tonight? How are you going to weigh out? Got a lot of folks say, none of y'all business. I'll live all I want, live like I want to. Do what I want to do. It's nobody's business. It's some of God's business. Right. He created you. He had a purpose in life. You're not full and feel full of the purpose. If you're not feel full of that that God wants you to do, He has a right to pull you over the scales. And I raise the question right, if God pulled you over the scales, how would you weigh out in God? 
God's way tonight. Are you overweight or underweight with God tonight? Hey, we are with God tonight, friend. Dark weed in the balance and found warning. What about you? You're on the table. We think a lot of times we're all right and we compared to God. You're not capable. Your heart's deceitful. Five foolish virgins shot to us right now too, didn't they? <coughs> but when the bridegroom came and went in and shut to the door, they stood out and knocked on the door. But they didn't get in, did they? The man that got in the wedding without a wedding garment thought it's all right for him to go in the wedding without the wedding garment, didn't he? But when he got in, they threw him out. He didn't weigh enough to stay in there. Five foot of dirt didn't have any oil in their lamp. And they knocked and cried outside, but he said, depart from me. I never knew you. Made a difference, didn't it? They got weighed out. I'm sure those virgins are good as virgins. They never had committed adultery. They never had to live wrong. They were good, clean girls. But they didn't have any oil in the lamps. This guest they went in without the wedding garment on. I'm sure it was a good thing. But didn't have to come at all. I don't care how good you are if you go in without the blood, the wrong way to hide in the blood of the Lamb, you're not going to stay in, you'll get towed out in hell. Right. I don't care how virtuous you are if you go up and knock on the door and you haven't been saved and got the saving grace of God in your soul, you ain't going to get in. That's right. Not at all. Hard weight. What do you got in your soul? Hard <coughs> weight. Hard weight. Face it tonight. The way you out, what do you weigh? Have you got God inside to balance up? <coughs> Just face it tonight. Just face it a little bit. And the scale of the estimation of your fellow man. <coughs> How about your fellow man? You can't even estimate your own self. How are you going to estimate the other fellow? I can't determine where you at because I can't determine my own self a lot of times. You don't know yourself. How can you know somebody else? When you don't have access to your own heart sometime, I ain't going to do anybody else. <laughs> Weigh yourself in the scales of God. Weigh your spiritual character. Do you still have guilt? Or have you settled it all with God and the guilt's gone? Do you have pardon tonight? Have you been pardoning your sins? Is your guilt gone? Are you wearing out of your power sin? If you're not, thou art weighed and found wanting. Yes. What about it tonight, friend? What about it? Mm -hmm. Love of God. Oh, what do you love? What is your love for? Love not the world or the things of the world that cause her that will pass away. <coughs> You listen to me, my friends. You tie your everything you got in the love of the world and you get jilted in your love affair. In the message or two that I'm sure I've used in illustration, but it illustrates what I want to say here. We had a girl one time in the church and she's in love with a boy. 
announce the wedding. The wedding cake is baked. The wedding gown is made. The wedding is announced. And about which night for the wedding is take with place on Sunday. The old boy announced to her that his sweetheart, he didn't love her and he wasn't going to marry her. I said, stop going. That girl called me and she began to scream and I thought the whole family had been killed or something. <laughs> I said, listen, please calm yourself enough to tell me what's happened. She just screamed on the other end of the phone. Just screamed. I just couldn't imagine what all happened. And secondly, she said, Butch told me he didn't love him, he wasn't going to marry me. And the wedding gown's no good, the cake's are no good. And I'm embarrassed, my picture's in the paper, and I'm going to get mad. And it's embarrassed the family and hurt the family and hurt me, and we were disgraced. He don't love me, he ain't going to go marry me. I said, quit crying. Get on your knees and thank God you found out he's a low down rascal for your man. <laughs> Shout out! Yeah, you didn't. You best thing that ever happened for you, I'm going to love you and be a companion to you. Better find it out before you get mixed up with him. Right. My friend, the world don't love you. They're lusting after you. They're lusting you. And when they get their lust satisfied, and they can't enjoy any more lust, they'll jump you. They'll jilt you. They'll lead you. Hey, when you wait out with the world, it's lust. And lust, when it's finished, is sin. And sin, when it's finished, bring forth death. And death is doom and damnation and destruction. I want you to know tonight, thou art weighed in the balance and found on if you hadn't got Jesus. If you hadn't got salvation, if you hadn't got the word, the blood of Jesus upon your soul, you're lost. You're mm -hmm. way up to God. Right. right. Face it tonight. Way to, as a result, your spiritual character and what it ought to be. Or you're loving tonight. And you just say, just stop and think. What are you loving all your life? In love of the things of the world, the lust of the world, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, no love for God. Oh, I love God. I love it how much? More than you love the world? Lovest thou me more than these? Lovest thou me more than these? Then do something about it. Then do something about it. Lovest thou me more? What is it tonight? Lust or love? If it's lost, you do not. When you read in the balance and found more, God ain't going to save you with lust. Lust don't save. Lust damns. Lust brings death. Lust brings deterioration. Lust brings degradation and ruination and damnation and doom and darkness and devils on you. Love. What is if God weighs you out tonight? Come on. The God that created you. The God that gives you breath. The God that gives you hell. The remember the Lord thy God in thee. It's God that gives thee power to get wealth. God didn't give me. Yes, He did. He gave you health to get wealth. No, all the doctor gave me hell. No, He didn't. All the doctor does. You go to him, he gives you some green pills and pink pills and yellow pills to ease your pain, feel it till nature runs its course. If it don't change your to heal you, it don't change your course. You turn your toes to the face, you like throw stuff in the graveyard. You see, but oh, wait a minute, preacher! Wait a minute, preacher! The doctor operated and took my penis out of my broad bladder. Well, if it hadn't been that, I'd die. If God hadn't healed your side up, you'd have died anyhow. Right. And it's all it's God. Yes. Now don't act a fool and think, go on and say that I don't believe you need a doctor. Jesus said the sick man needs a doctor. I get to hurt him bad enough, I want two or three around. They can fool me whether they do me any good or not. But when you're boiling down, God gives you the health to get the wealth you got. 
God gives you the strength to get what you got. And why are you loving? If God weighed your love over against your lust tonight, how would it weigh out, neighbor? Just weighing. Thou art weighed in the battles tonight for lust against love. Lust of the world. Lust of the flesh. Lust of the eye. Lust of the passion over against the love for God. How do you weigh out tonight? What do you weigh? How do I weigh? Thou art weighed in the balance and found more. Old Job said when God rise up and visited me, what shall then I answer him? Maybe we're going to face God one of these days. People, a lot of people are living like they don't think you'll ever bump into God. Well, some people are living, they don't think they'll ever face God. But you hear this better preaching. There's a day when every knee is going to bow. Yes. And every tongue, infidels, atheists, hell bound, heaven bound, everybody else is going to confess that Jesus wow. Christ is on God. Wow. You blaspheming, cussing, God hating, preacher hating, church hating, righteous haters, cuss God and blaspheme all you want to. There's a day when your cussing, blaspheming, hating tongue will say that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. What you want to say it or not, you'll say it, but you'll be condemned because you don't weigh up for God. Right. That's right. <coughs> Face it tonight. Yes. God weighed in the balance and found one. This seven, your gold's great. Your diamonds are great, your party is great. Your business is great. You're a great king. You're a great influence. You're very popular. But in the sight of God, God's blessing, God is enriched to God, has given you everything. And now then, you turned away from God and praised to the things of, of God instead of God. And God just waits you out and you don't wait nothing. He's going to keep you life. You're key you tonight. Weigh your principles. Let God confide in Him. Do you trust God and glorify God? Or is it something else? Weigh your graces. Have you faith in Christ and in God or in something else? God wants you to have faith in Him. Now just come on, what are you loaded down with tonight? Excuse us. A lot of folks are loaded down with excuses tonight. But hey, let me tell you something. God said because of the manifestation of the eternal Godhead in creation, you'll be without excuse in that day. See, everything God ever created has three parts to it. Three parts to the eye, three parts to the brain, three parts to the body, three parts to your productive organs. Three parts to a tree, heart, shepherd, bark, three parts to a flower. Three parts to everything, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. God said, you'll go to hell if you never see a Bible, if you never hear a preacher, if you never see a church, I'll send you to hell. Some said, I'm mad if I can't come. I've got to go, God said, God, try and I can't come. I've got some problem that can't come. And Jesus said, go somebody who will come. Mm -hmm. yes. I'm sure the others, when they went to him, came and filled the table. But listen, they had a wife too. They had oxen too, I'm yes. sure. Right. They had some problems too. But they are glad to come to supper. Mm -hmm. Of course, who by it? Now listen to what Jesus said. Those who were bidden and didn't come weren't worthy. Wasn't that a novel slam? Pray me, have excused. I can't go. Why? I'm oxen. I'm a piece of property. I pray thee, have excused. What an awful prayer. God answered that prayer. 
He said you'll never be invited to the supper again. You're excused. And neither shall they ever eat of the supper. Not only did they not come of that, but they'll never get to eat supper anymore. They're not going to get invited anymore. Hey, the hard weed in the balance, and when you treat God and turn his number down, he's true. Right. Behold, I stand the door and knock. And the man will open. I'll come in and sup with him. And he with me. We'll have a supper time together. But he doesn't keep on knocking. There's a time he quits. The virgin's knocked. But he didn't open. And since they didn't like to think on God, he came over to reprobate mine, to do the sins of the world. And the body becomes a pit of sewage, of sin. And they never come back to him. Weighed in the balance, found one, couldn't find God. He saw for one less of bodies, sold his birthright, spent the rest of his life crawling around. Seeking a place to repent, but it never comes. Right. My spirit shall not always strive with man. And no man can come to me except the Father draw him. Right. Wait in the balance. And find wanting the spirit to come, but he doesn't come. Another one. I must read to you. For it's impossible for those who were once enlightened. I get this scripture. Hebrews 6 and 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened. Once enlightened. And have tasted the heavenly gift and were made to take us of the Holy Ghost. Taste the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. Who is it? They've tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. Taste it. You taste a lot of things you don't eat. You taste a lot of things you don't drink. Taste the good word of God. Taste the powers of the world to come. Take the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost don't say. Jesus is the bread of life. And the water of life. He that eateth of this bread. He that drinketh of this water. They, didn't, they just tasted and saw it was good. They just tasted and saw the bread is good. Just tasted and saw the water. They were so enlightened. They just taste the heavenly gift. But they turned away to the wine, to the wine of the dying, the wine of the music, the wine of the night. And God wrote on the wall and said, it's all. And there was no more. There's no more that night. There's never been another Belshazzar party, and there will be. They all went that night. Listen to me. There comes a time when God's Holy Spirit so moves you that you can just taste of God. You can just taste. God so moves in your breast and your chest till you can just taste Him. You just feel Him. Just taste Him. The good word of God and the powers of the world to come. It just feels so good. You just enjoy the presence of God. You think of the things you've got to give up in this world. You think of certain people you've got to leave alone and stay away from. <clears throat> things you lose if you do it. You say, oh, I just can't give up. Thank you, I just can't. I just, I, I won't do it. I won't do it. 
And all of a sudden, that all leaves. You never feel that way again. You never get close enough to taste again. <clears throat> you never will. Holy Spirit got enough of it and he left. Shut the door. You're not going to But he won't come. He was standing there knocking on the door and saying, I'll suck with you. If you want a real party, come on. We're having something together. You listen. Listen to the old preacher of mine. I dare you, I dare you to find any born again Christian anywhere alive or dead that will tell you their experience with God is disappointing to them. I've never heard one yet. I'm not going to hear one. You're not either. But I've stood around the hospital beds and around the death cell before the electric chair was turned on. I've stood around the other I heard the crime story, I wished I hadn't done this and hadn't done that. But nobody's ever say, I wished I hadn't become a Christian. Listen to me. said, Holy Spirit, that's enough for that. And come on. We don't bother them no more. That's all for that. Books closed. Door shut. All the prayers. What did it say? He saw some place of repentance with tears on his knees the rest of his life. But never come. better than the blood of your son. And Cain died crying places of repentance and never found it. What the heck? Search it out. Judas got that fire piece of silver. He came and threw the silver down. He cried and tried to find a place of repentance, but the monk said he never found it. Right. He went out and hanged himself and his body it off. And the owls in the tree hooted, what a fool, Judas. What a fool. What a fool. And God said, since they didn't like to think on God, I give them over to reprobate mine. To do those things. Sin that they want to do. God said, since it looks like that's what you want to do, I'm going to accommodate you and let you do it the rest of your life. But there'll be no God after that. And he said, God, give them strong illusion, illusion, that they might believe a lie and be damned. Because they love pleasures of sin rather than the things of God. That's right. I want you to know tonight, young ones and old ones, there's going to be a weighing time. Yes. Right in the midst of you kicking up your heels and enjoying sin and playing your sin and being the crowd that's forgot God. God is going to God when you are at the peak of your enjoyment of the pleasures of sin, God will come in and write your sinners and it'll be over. Right. The Caesar didn't change here. Cain didn't change here. Judas didn't change here. 
Esau didn't change his. What then? When God rises up and visited you, you think you're going to answer God? Said another place in the book of Job. And so I'm not considered how wicked men of old has been covered, destroyed by the fires. And who are you that you think you can get by? Now listen to the preacher's conclusion tonight. God gave you everything you got. Give you the health to get you well. Give you the ability to do what you've done. Create you to be somebody. Wants you and loves you. Wants to give you heaven so you can live and enjoy life through eternity. And you went out here fretting around with the devil and the devil's crowd trying to go to hell on it. And God's played with you. God's preached to you. God has sang to you. God has given you Christian parents to pray with you and talk with you. God's done everything He can do to stop somebody. And you just going along pitching your little set towards the devil. And all of a sudden, listen, don't fool yourself. You say it hardened their hearts that they couldn't believe. In the book of John. Deaf their ears that they couldn't hear and be converted. Listen to me, sinner! Turn down the Lord God behind your heart! Dead in your ears, shut your doors, and not listen when you cry. Right. But he'll listen tonight. And I'd come to this altar. And while I could get weighed, I'd go out tonight. I'd say, Yeah, I want God waving while you can wave. I want God in my heart. I want to get right. I want to be weighed out tonight, God. Wait, what I was saying.